Okay, so there was this big bash. There was this party. Party, bash, whatever. In the city. That's what we through. came down for. I got this um, flyer from them in the mail. It just sounded really great. We came back in New York, stopped in, maybe say hi to the folks. Be good to go down for a couple of days. Oh, so I, I contacted the three people going to school with us, you know, three friends from home who are also going to Boston College. Ended up, we called two other couples to go back with us. A friend of mine, Tim. A year behind, this David guy. Oh, David, yes, David. He offered to drive, so we all took his car down. The party was the same weekend as the black and white ball up in school. I'm rushing around, fighting for tuxedos. Looks okay, doesn't it? Have the stress I've been saving for something like this, you know. Did I mention that? So the girls decided to wear their outfits for the ride down. Sue's got a knockout day. Kind of a cutaway. What's it called? I mean, it's not this, it's the sweetheart never mind. Sweetheart, I think. In the front, you know, over her chest, not any sleeves, just very little on top. But she too, right? She looks great. I'm proud to be with her. You know, I just love the idea of getting out at some you know, gas station in the middle of Connecticut wearing this bright red dress. I'm putting gas in, and I see nothing but a bright, bright red dress going down the snack line. That killed me. I always remember that. Her smiling at me through the glass ledge, a little bit of chocolate on her lips. This is going to be a great party. You know, I can feel it. And it was our anniversary, too. Four years. Believe that? Four years since fall of our third year in Lisbon. Wow. Oh, yeah, sometimes we fight. We do, like anybody else. You know, whatever. But we're getting engaged this summer. We already planned it. It's our anniversary, right? And we're open for this great time and whatnot. We want it all to be special. We get in the city. We got into the city in like less than three hours? A uh, weekend traffic, that's not bad. We decided to go in on a room. All of us. Not for anything. I mean, you know. And we got into our rooms and uh, you know, started getting ready for the party. We had a few hours still. She comes out of the bathroom. And like I said, this is four years we've been going out together. I'm still staring at the best looking girl I have ever seen. I'm just completely in love. Seriously. Oh, you know, the dress helps, you know. Not gonna kid myself, but it helps, but you know, I can see John's happy. We walk downstairs, arm in arm. Man, it feels so nice to still pass all these people. But now we're almost glad to part as we approach it. Party's not until later, you know. Nothing but possibilities. Karen takes the lead at some point in walking us through the park. John was holding my hand so tight. Perfect. It's a perfect moment. Then, there's these patch of woods near the path. It comes this rustling. I thought it might be some you know, teenagers or God knows what. Two guys, middle-aged guys, come out of the car, smiling. And I don't need a map to tell me what's been going on. I don't. Just two guys walking along. You know, it's no big deal. So we get to the plaza. Party's great. I haven't danced like that in a long time. It's fun. Back like that in the city, it's always fun. I've never been to the plaza before. It was tremendous. There was so much, you know, glass and high white walls. And but the trip, everything, the dance, it, it all made me so sleepy. Soon the girls went upstairs in our room. Said they wanted to take a quick nap. Whatever. Then we go get a buddy. This is like maybe 1.30. The girls and I, we, we all fell asleep there together on the king size bed. I was a touch board, so we stole around a bit. We shoot right through Central Park, looking around, talking. I think I looked up at like 2, 2.30? I'm not sure. And then I saw those guys from right there. They were saying goodnight. Well, not saying it exactly, but kissing. Hands are where they shouldn't be. I mean, come on, I know the scriptures. And this is wrong. Then one of them disappears down the trail. The other guy casually strolls over to this restroom, whistling while he goes. He was whistling. Oh, I thought about getting out of my dress, but you now I'm so tired, I just couldn't move. I don't think I even dreamed that night. I told him to hold off. Wait out here for me until they got my signal. When I got inside, I spotted his leg patiently sitting in the stall, waiting. So I slipped into the booth next to his, and like clockwork, his hand comes up under my side of the partition, his fingers wiggling up at me, imploring. I know.
noticed this thin gold band on his little finger catching the light. So I lay my open palm with his. And two minutes later, we're standing near the mirror, sizing each other up. Small talk. I didn't even bat an eyelash as he moved in. His lips playing across my mouth. His free hand tracing down my thigh. I just smiled at him. His shoulders relaxed. Then I whispered. He stumbles back as Tim and Dave appear in the doorway. He's battling and wetting himself like an infant. My first shot catches him on the cheek. Just under the eye, he slams it to the sink. It's hard to get off a clean shot with all of us hitting him, but I know I connected a few more times. Finally, we relax, looking at what we've done. It's silence, not a sound. Then Dave grabs a trash can, this big wire mess thing. He raises it above his head and whispers, Bad. I'll never forget that. Bad. That's all. And he brought that trash can right on the spot of the guy, who sort of shuddered a bit. I leaned down and pulled that ring off his finger. I told you I noticed it. Oh, the phone woke me up. We called the room from the street and wanted to take the girls out to breakfast. I got the other girls up and, and I felt really refreshed. I did. Tim pulls me aside. Wants to know why I punched the guy. Let him kiss me. But I didn't know. I didn't have an answer. Isn't that strange? It was um, so quiet in the lobby as we were tip as we were walking in. I started tiptoeing out. Isn't that funny? I couldn't answer. He pointed out to me though that my shirt had blood on it. So I asked Tim to hit me in the face. Only for a second. I saw John's face, you know, cut up like it was. Or, you know, he's fallen down, racing along the fountain outside the front of the hotel. He you know, scraped himself up, blood on everything. It's the only game. Had a great meal. And I was uh, eating my breakfast, you know, eating along with my little French toast, and I saw this uh, flash of light in my water glass. Um, John had slipped a ring in it, <laughs> and it was this beautiful gold ring, and it had this wonderful lead embellishment around it. And it was a little big, but it fits pretty well. And, you know, I just, I just loved him so much at that moment. And I kissed him in front of everybody. He blushed a little. We decided to take the Amtrak back up, just Sue and myself. It was my idea to train. As we tumbled toward Massachusetts, I could feel Sue fall asleep on my shoulder, all warm, protected. Oh, we are getting married for sure. And I hope it's a fall wedding. I think they're the most beautiful. But not me. I couldn't drift off. So I sat up, I watched the lights dance by, you know, I started whistling to myself. Strange, as I was uh, sleeping there on John's arm, I, I swear I could hear music. Not loud. I mean, I couldn't even recall the tune, but I was whistling. I was. That much, I remember. Beautiful music, like, uh, like the sound of angels calling us home. Thank you.